Not a big fan of nukes? Me neither. But what if I tell you that one day you'll be carrying one in your pocket? What if it's inside your phone because it's environmentally friendly and could keep it charged for more than 50 years? Yes, you heard me right. I am talking about nuclear-powered phones because that is what is happening in China where companies are chasing an absurd-sounding dream. A dream of making phones that don't need to be charged for 50 years. Radioactive material is often deemed as dangerous, and rightfully so. But its ability to emit radiation also means it can be used as a potent source of electric power. And which device of ours requires power most frequently? Obviously, our smartphones. With that idea, a Chinese company called Betavolt spotted an opportunity. Now they claim to have built a nuclear-powered battery that can power smartphones continuously for 50 years or even more. They've managed to squeeze 63 nuclear isotopes into something the size of a coin, kind of like a button cell, and this package can crank out 100 microwatts and 3 volts. To do this, Betavolt's team of scientists developed a unique crystal diamond semiconductor with a thickness of only 10 microns. Does that really work for power-hungry modern-day smartphones? Not really, and this is why they're aiming for a version that can give 1 watt by 2025. However, this battery is suitable for stuff like digital watches, pacemakers, and other small gadgets. If connected in series, they might be able to charge a phone as well, but that doesn't seem like the case at this moment. I know you're still wondering how having an unstable radioactive material in your pocket every day is even safe. Well, the company says that because of this battery's layered design, it's very safe and won't catch fire or explode under sudden stress. Betavolt says it can handle temperatures from minus 60 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. This battery also yields no external radiation, making it perfect for smartphones and even medical devices which reside inside us rather than our pockets. Another plus point is that these batteries are environmentally friendly, since post-decay, these isotopes turn into stable, non-reactive copper, so there's no pollution or environmental threat. Nuclear batteries convert the energy from nuclear isotope decay into electricity using a semiconductor converter. The US and the Soviet Union focused on this tech in the 1960s. Today, only thermoelectric nuclear batteries, specifically radioisotope thermoelectric generators or RTGs, are in use, mainly in aerospace. These batteries are bulky, heavy, expensive, run extremely hot, and are unsuitable for civilian use. However, US and European researchers are now working on making nuclear batteries smaller, modular, and suitable for civilian applications. China's 14th five-year plan and vision goals for 2035 also emphasize the civilian use of nuclear technology and the development of multi-purpose nuclear isotopes. British company Arkinlight, born from University of Bristol Research, was talking about bringing tiny nuclear batteries to market by 2024. They plan to use carbon-14 and promised up to 200 microwatts, pretty decent for nuclear batteries, but still not enough to power most gadgets. Their website mysteriously disappeared last year. Then there's nano-diamond batteries from the US, which made a splash a few years back, claiming they could make batteries lasting over 20,000 years using nuclear waste. But recently, they've been hit with fraud allegations for supposedly scamming investors with untested tech, so their grand claims fizzled out faster than expected. See, RTGs might be well understood, but they're bulky and not exactly efficient for making electricity since they rely on a roundabout temperature gradient. If you actually want electricity, a better option is using semiconductors to directly convert nuclear decay into power. That's what the Chinese company Betavolt, along with some British and American companies, are working on. They're making alpha-voltaic, beta-voltaic, or gamma-voltaic batteries depending on whether they use alpha, beta, or gamma decay. Quick refresher, alpha decay spits out helium nuclei that are two neutrons and two protons. Beta decay releases electrons and gamma decay shoots out protons. Beta Volt uses beta decay with nickel-63, which has a half-life of about 100 years. They cram it between diamond semiconductors with a PN junction. Yep, it sounds technical, but think of it like a solar cell. Instead of using light to generate current, they're using electrons from beta decay. The company recently won the third prize in a China National Nuclear Corporation innovation competition for their battery. The tech itself isn't groundbreaking, but pushing it for consumer use is new. But why? Here's the list of benefits you must know about. 
Betavolt stuck a 2 micron thick sheet of nickel 63 between two diamond semiconductor converters to turn the decay energy into electric current, forming a single unit. These nuclear batteries are modular, so you can stack dozens or even hundreds of these units together in series or parallel to create batteries of different sizes and capacities. These batteries offer unparalleled longevity, capable of operating for decades without needing replacement or recharging, unlike traditional batteries that degrade over time. They generate their own power for 50 years straight, with no concept of charge cycles like the 2000 chargers and discharges of regular batteries. Their stable power output remains consistent across varying environmental conditions, ensuring reliable performance in extreme temperatures or under heavy loads. Also, there's no self-discharge to worry about. Unlike regular electrochemical batteries, nuclear batteries pack over 10 times the energy density of lithium-ion batteries. With significantly higher energy density compared to conventional batteries, nuclear batteries can store more energy in a smaller footprint, optimizing space efficiency. Moreover, their ability to operate without the need for frequent recharging reduces downtime and maintenance costs, making them economically attractive over their lifespan. Designed in modular configurations, nuclear batteries will in future flexibly meet diverse power requirements from small devices to large-scale applications, promising versatility in use. Their environmental resilience and safety standards, including minimal radiation exposure, further enhance their appeal for critical and remote environments. Now, I know you're all excited and willing to have phones that run on nuclear batteries, but there is still something you need to know about the claims of 50 years without charge and powering up a full-blown smartphone. So, this Betavolt battery cranks out 3 volts with a power output of 100 microwatts. Crunching the numbers, that means it's pushing about 0.000033 amps of current per second. To put that into perspective, it's less than what you'd get from stacking up a few pennies of nickel. That tiny electric current is just electrons flowing from nickel decay. Speaking of which, at that rate, we're converting about 2.08 times 10 to the power of 14 nickel atoms into copper every second to keep the current going. Over 50 years, that would munch through about 34.3 grams of nickel 63, about the size of a sugar cube. Sounds manageable, right? But here's the kicker. The current isn't steady because decay rates slow down over time. So while the battery can theoretically last 50 years, it's going to get weaker and weaker as time goes on. I know that no matter what people say, they will upgrade their phone at least once every 10 years and possibly way before that. Your phone guzzles up way more power than you think. Take the iPhone 13, for instance. Its battery packs 3,240 milliamp hours, enough to pump out 3.24 amps for an hour. That's a whopping 2.8 times 10 to the 19 electrons per charge, whether you use it all at once or spread it throughout the day. Of course, when your phone's chilling in your pocket or on a counter overnight, it's hardly sipping any juice. But imagine if it ran on a beta voltage battery. It would draw current from the decay of nickel-63, hypothetically helping it stay always on, and producing enough power to handle even your most demanding tasks. Now let's get a little realistic. Your phone can draw anywhere from 0.5 to 2 amps, depending on what you're up to. Let's say you want a beta voltage battery that cranks out 1.5 amps for a decade so you can Pokemon Go non-stop. That's a staggering 2.9 times 10 to the power of 27 electrons total which means you'd need about 309,000 grams of nickel-63. Yeah, that's about 680 pounds, basically the weight of a female yak. Actually, you'd need even more considering the decay rate slows over time. Maybe if you ditched gaming and streaming and stuck to the basics, a goat's worth would cut it. So, nuclear batteries are a real deal, lasting ages. But unless our phones get a whole lot more efficient, don't expect them in the newest models anytime soon. I've made a video to tell you guys about a hyper-realistic AI military commander. Yes, a commander. The thing can even strategize like the most capable human commanders. How? Click the video link popping to find out.